Good morning, Bridge Church. My name is Lisa, and we are so glad you're worshiping with us from all across the country today. If your heart is seeking God, we know that he is ready to meet with you right where you are, and we are honored to be part of your journey. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in his letter to the Ephesians. Now glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we could ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. We stand in agreement with this powerful confession as we have truly seen God exceed our expectations over these past few weeks. He has been answering prayer, touching lives with hope and healing, and providing for our needs in ways that only can be called miraculous. Don't forget to contact us and let us know what God is doing in your life or with any needs or prayer requests that you may have. There is also a staff member available right now in the chat window below to assist you in any way throughout today's service. In fact, we have seen numbers of people respond to our offer to send out a Now What pamphlet as a result of their recent decision to follow Christ. We are so excited about the opportunity to walk alongside these growing believers in their early steps of faith. If you've been watching our services over the past few weeks and you've placed your faith in Christ, we want to send you this little booklet with no obligation whatsoever. It is totally free because we want to celebrate with you and encourage you as you grow in the Lord. Simply send us your mailing address in a direct message, an email, or a voicemail, and we will drop that in the mail for you this week. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Now, as we prepare our hearts for worship, will you join me for a moment of prayer? Dear Lord, we just surrender this entire service into your hands. Every part that is coming forth, Lord, from the worship to the message, everything, Lord God, that has been prepared, we lift up to you as an offering. Let it be a sweet-smelling savor to you this morning. We just surrender our hearts and our lives, and we look to you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister to each family and each individual wherever they are tuning in. So God, let your blessing rest upon us. Let your anointing rest upon us today as we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Bridge Church, it's time to get your praise on. We serve an awesome God who is alive and on the throne. In fact, God's word says that he sits enthroned upon our praises. So let's lift the name of Jesus high and give him all the glory today. Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us on live stream this morning. Let's just lift our hearts and our voices in worship to God today.
never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle And I know, I know You never certain times it's so easy to feel fear and the songs that we've been singing today are just talking about how the Lord's promises are yes and amen he is faithful to us always and he's never lost a battle he's never once failed us but we can still feel sometimes these feelings of fear and frustration and stress and anxiety and all of these things So sometimes in these moments, we need to remind ourselves of the goodness of God. We need to remind ourselves that he has us, that we don't need to worry, that we don't need to fear, and we need to speak these things out upon ourselves and over us. So I just want to share a scripture with you that has been encouraging to me in this time. Um, And so I just want to share it with you. And it's Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. 
Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own.
Picked up all my pieces, put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. When I thought I lost me, you knew where I left me. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all my Lord, thank you for meeting us where we each are at, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for providing for us in this time, Lord. We pray that your hand would just be over this service, Lord, that you would be glorified and receive all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Jonathan and I'm Danny and we just want to say that we miss you guys immensely uh, we cannot stand seeing not seeing our teens here for the past three or four weeks and we just can't wait till we get back into some normalcy uh, we miss seeing you on Wednesday evenings and Sunday mornings but we just want to let you guys know how much we miss you and we pray that God will take you into a deeper relationship with him during this season especially with you and your kids um, and as we go into a time of worship in the Word, uh, we just pray that you'll be able to lift up the name of your Creator because He is good. So thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you guys sometime soon. See you guys. Every week there is something happening for your teens through Momentum Youth's online platforms. Whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, we are figuring out different ways to connect with your teens at this time. Fresh interactive content hits these social platforms every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Join us for some fun on Monday nights during our Zoom Hangouts, Tuesdays for student-led devotionals, and Wednesdays for our online video devotional and small group time. Send us a message on Facebook, Instagram, or the email listed on your screen to be added to our mailing list each week so you will get this content. We also have a variety of posts for encouragement and parent cues to give the whole family tools to help you guide them through this time as well. Many of you have been looking for opportunities to make a difference in your community during this challenging COVID-19 crisis. 
we have compiled some information for those of you who desire to lend a hand. Please visit our website and click on the COVID-19 link to get information about making and donating masks, as well as other ways to be a blessing. Thank you so much for your hearts that never stop caring. Today is Mission Sunday at the Bridge Church. We set aside time on the third Sunday of each month to bring attention to a missionary family or project. Today, we want to talk to you about Convoy of Hope. This first response ministry is not just responding to the crisis in our nation due to the pandemic. Convoy of Hope is also on the front lines of other recent natural disasters that have occurred in Arkansas, Tennessee, and Idaho. Let's watch this short video to get some more insights about this great organization. Hi, this is Hal Donaldson of Convoy of Hope with another update on our response to the coronavirus. Our effort to distribute 10 million meals across the United States is well underway. Our fleet of tractor trailers continue to crisscross the nation to deliver food and emergency supplies to children and families who've been hit hard by the recent crisis. This map will give you an idea of where, with your help, Convoy of Hope is responding to urgent needs. To date, more than five million meals have already been distributed but please know it's your generosity that's making all this possible. We want to thank the corporations that have made food and emergency supplies available to us. We also want to thank all the donors, the volunteers, and church groups who have given so sacrificially to make sure people receive the help they need. Listen, we are committed to keeping our trucks rolling. We're going to do as much as we can for as long as we can. So please know this, that anything you can give right now will help us deliver more truckloads of food and emergency supplies. You can give online at convoyofhope.org or by sending your contribution to Convoy of Hope, P.O. Box 1125, Springfield, Missouri, 65801. Let me thank you in advance for caring and giving to this united act of compassion. We're going to get through this, but we're going to get through it by pulling together. Thank you for your trust and your partnership, and God bless. If you are already a regular supporter of missions through the Bridge Church, we want you to know that everything you give today in your missions offering will go directly to Convoy of Hope. Simply go to our website and click the Give tab. From there, you can access a drop-down to give your regular tithes and offerings or go to the missions account. If you are just visiting with us today and would like to support this emergency response ministry, please go directly to the Convoy of Hope website and donate there. We hope you are staying connected beyond Sunday morning to our other ministry content throughout the week. These include a midweek time of worship and prayer on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Tuesday morning devotions at 8 a.m., and other creative content as we develop it. Our Bridge Street Kids and Momentum Youth pages are sharing family-centered posts throughout the week, and our TBC Women of Purpose page is active as well. This may be new territory for many of us, but we pray that you are constantly reminded that God is with you, His Spirit is strengthening you, and we will get through this with a testimony of His faithfulness on the other side. Now it's time to grab your Bible and open your heart as Pastor Mark returns to his series on the battle. Good morning and welcome, uh, Bridge Church and those that are watching today. We're so grateful to have you. Uh, this morning, I trust that this past week was a, a wonderful week for you as you celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're picking up on the series that we left off before Palm Sunday called The Battle. You know, a few weeks ago, I was playing my grandson, who is 11, in chess. And chess is very strategic, and I'm not a strategic thinker. I am a visionary. I see the big picture, and I just want to go for it. You know, I don't think through the whole process or the details. I just want to go for what I see or what I believe that God is, is directing us to do. And, but chess is very strategic. You've got to think through the process. And the primary objective in chess is to checkmate your opponent's king. And when a king cannot avoid capture, then it's called checkmate, and you have lost that game. And I remember when I was playing Jackson that day that he yelled out, checkmate. And to be honest with you, I didn't accept defeat. I did not want to lose to my 11-year-old grandson. But I finally came to the point where I had to 
realize that he did defeat me and I lost that game. You know, we're in a series called The Battle and it's a spiritual battle that we fight. And it's almost like the game of chess, if you will. When you think about that very first Christmas, God declared, check, Emmanuel, God with us. And from that moment, the devil did everything possible to try to defeat him. Harold had every male child two years and younger killed. The temptation in the wilderness, the strife between the Jews and the religious leaders, Peter trying to stop Jesus from going to the cross, Judas betrays him, the mob who sang Hosanna one day in a very few hours later would also shout, crucify him, crucify him, and then the cross. Uh, Satan did everything possible to defeat Christ. But on Easter, the Easter that we celebrated last week, it was as God said, checkmate. Jesus won the battle against death and sin. And now through faith in him, he alone places his righteousness within us. The word righteous means right standing with God. We are not defined by our past, the guilt or the shame but we stand in his righteousness alone, forgiven by his grace. And yet, the devil continues to attack. Because the enemy's goal is to keep you and me from living in the victory that Christ has won for us. You know, we fight not only for victory, but we fight from victory. And so Paul is writing this letter to the Ephesus church as he is writing it to us today. He's writing this from prison. And he has given you and I the tools to defeat the lies of the enemy. So we read in Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flame and arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. May God add his blessing upon his word this morning. I want you to notice a few things with me. I want you to notice first to be strong in his mighty power. You know, when we receive Christ, he deposits, deposits the Holy Spirit within us. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is God. That means that he is all-powerful, that he's all-knowing, that he's ever-present within your life. You know, in the natural, we have limitations. But God has no limitations. That's what I love about the Apostle Paul when he writes, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Through his power and through his might, we're capable of standing against the fiery darts of the enemy. Then I want you to notice the full armor. Each piece of the armor is vital. We cannot become so familiar with one piece or the different pieces of the army, armor that we take the armor for granted. We need to place on our, ourselves, we need to put on to the full armor of God. Then I want you to notice he is calling us to stand. And three times he uses this word stand. I believe that the first time he uses the word stand, he's talking about stand ready for the battle. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Listen, he is looking to devour someone today. He has come only to steal, kill, and destroy. And so we've got to be ready. We've got to take that stand and be ready for his attacks. The second stand, I believe, it, it deals with being strong in the middle of the battle. 
that we take our, our stand and we hold firm in the middle of our trial or in the middle of our difficulty. Then the third is we stand in victory at the end of the battle. That's what I love about the Olympics. We're not going to see them this summer, but one of the things that I really appreciate about the Olympics is when, when an American wins that gold and they stand on that platform and they play our national anthem, man, they just, just, they've got their hands raised in victory. That's what God wants us, how he wants us to live. He wants us to stand firm in, in victory this morning. Well, today's piece of armor is out of verse 17, and it says, take the helmet of salvation. You know, when I played football in school, there weren't many, this was one sport that I was, I was blessed to be able to play decent. And uh, I hardly ever came off that field. But the moments that I came off that field, I was never allowed to take off my helmet. If you were on the sideline, our coach made sure that everyone had their helmet on. And I think there were a number of reasons why he made us keep our helmet on on the sidelines. Number one, it was to focus. Our goal was to defeat that other team. And so that helmet was a signal that we are to focus on this game. Second, I think we were to be ready. That helmet was a sign that we were ready. So when that coach called our number, we weren't looking for our helmet. We weren't trying to find our, our misplaced helmet. It was already on. We were all ready to get in that game. But third reason why I think he had us wear that helmet was that it told us that we were part of a team, that this was a team sport, and that whether you were on the field or on the sidelines, that you were an important part of that team. You know, the Roman soldier wore a helmet. I have one of the, uh, a display of a helmet of what it might have looked like during that day. And, and it, you can see what, what it would be like. And, and it caused that soldier to focus because the goal of that soldier was to defeat the enemy that they were fighting. But the primary purpose of this helmet was to protect the head or to protect the mind. And if the major weapon, listen, if the major weapon of the enemy, of the devil, is to lie, matter of fact, in John 8:44, it says this about Satan. It says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. Listen, that's an important, uh, a vital part of, of who he is. That when Satan speaks, his native language is a lie. It goes on and says, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And the enemy this morning will lie to you. He will lie about your failures and that you'll never be able to be restored. He'll tell you about your inadequacies to create insecurities. He'll create a desire to become almost overconfident with some and and almost prideful in your arrogance. Uh, for some, he'll, he'll cause doubt to, to, uh, to lie, uh, lie to you that your, your salvation isn't real. For others, he'll lie to you uh, that this man or this woman has more to offer you than your spouse. He'll, he'll lie to you and create fears and disappointments and magnify those disappointments in your life. The enemy target, his target is the mind. Because how you think determines where you will go. Our feet follow our focus. And before every action, there is a thought. There's a great quote. It says this. Sow a thought, and you reap an action. Sow an action, and you reap a habit. Sow a habit, and you reap a character. Sow a character, and you'll reap a destiny. Our destiny comes from how we think. And so it's important to think about what we think about. And as Christ followers, our thoughts need to flow from the gospel. You know, Pastor Jonathan talked about the belt of truth, his promises, his principles, the word of God. Uh, this morning, I just want to give you some thoughts that, that, that you're able to think about uh, this morning when it comes to the mind. Romans chapter 8, verse 5, it says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Isaiah 26.3 says, 
you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Colossians 3.2 says, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Romans 12.2, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And lastly, 2 Corinthians 10.5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Notice here that last part. It says take, you've got to take captive every thought to make it obedient to, the, to, the, to, to Christ. Change your thoughts and you'll change your destiny. It all begins with the helmet of salvation. Whether you're a Christ follower, or maybe this morning you're not a follower, but you're on a journey, you're on a search for a relationship, for peace, for joy. You're looking for fulfillment in your life. Can I tell you that it all begins with the helmet of salvation. And so this morning I want to talk about one verse. It's a very important verse because it, 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 it's all about where we begin and where we find true peace and we try, try, we find true harmony with, with the Lord. And it's Romans 6, verse 23. And it says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let me try to break this down for you and so that, that you have a, a greater understanding of, of how it all begins and how we can change our destiny for the glory of God. First, I want you to see the wages, the word wa wages. A wage is something you earn. It's a payment for what you do. And so if you work a 40-hour week, at the end of that week, you've earned a paycheck. And so that employ employer is going to give you uh, that paycheck at the end of that week. You've earned it. It's a wage. But then I want you to notice the word sin. It's an archery term. And it literally means to miss the mark. And it can be used to express a willful rebellion against God or by making a mistake or just falling short. And then there's the word death. And what we earn from sin, the wages of sin, is death. Not only physical death. Listen, we all know that eventually we will pass from this life. We will die. The Bible says that we all will perish. That we all will die. And then there's the judgment. And so physically we know that there is a death. But it also is talking about a spiritual death. A spiritual death is a separation from God. Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sin have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you or hear us. And so sin, listen, it's a separation. It causes a separation. And so there's a spiritual death. There's this void in our life that we long to, to, to find fulfillment in that void. And, and so we, we go on this search. We go on this journey to find that fulfillment. But there's an important word because it's a word that transitions us. And it's the word but. He says, but the gift. A gift is something that you don't earn, but it's something you receive. And so you don't earn this, you receive this gift. Uh, some of us this morning, when I went and opened my bank account this morning, I had an extra $2,400 from the government. Listen, I didn't earn it. It was a gift from the government that eventually I will have to pay for. But it's a gift. A gift is something you don't earn, you don't work for. Man, you receive it. And then I want you to know the word God. God gives the gift. And then I want you to know life. Life, God is the giver of life. So if death is the separation from God, life unites us to God. So you've got to ask the question, if I'm living on the side of death, how do I get to the other side where there's life? Because here's the truth. 
What can a dead person do? A dead person can't do anything. So notice the words with me. Christ Jesus our Lord. Life is given through a relationship with Jesus alone. And the moment you place this helmet of salvation on your head, that is the moment that you begin to renew your mind. And you begin to think differently. And as you begin to think different, you walk in a new direction. It's called repentance. You change your ways. You walk in the opposite direction that you have been walking. And your final destination is a place called heaven. A place that will be in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. You receive that moment that you place that helmet on. You receive God's grace, God's mercy, and his unconditional love. As I was reading last week through Holy Week, as I was reading through Luke chapter 23, I was reminded that Christ wasn't the only one on that hill that day being crucified. And I want to read this portion out of Luke 23, starting with verse 32. And it says, Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes by casting lots. Now I just want to take a moment and stop there, because you see the grace and the mercy of God. He's on that cross and he's looking at these men that have, have just, just brutalized his body. They have, they have beat him. They have spit, spat on him. They have mocked him. And now he's looking down. They're dividing his clothes to insult him. And yet Jesus looks down with great compassion and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. We continue in verse 35. It says, the people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he has saved others. Let him save himself if he's, if he's God, God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came and mocked him. They had offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Here's a man that is reflecting on his past. He realizes his failures. And he comes as he hangs there on the cross and he is speaking out of humility to Christ. And he realized that he, deser he was deserving of this death. And Jesus says, today, listen, is your day. It's the day I'm going to remember you. Truly, I'm going to see you in paradise. You recognize that this man went from death to life. And this is what God's desire is for you and for me, is to take you and I from a point of death to a point of life. And the Bible says John, in John 3, 16, a very poor, a familiar portion of scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Friends, God wants to take you from a point of death from a, part, a point of sorrow and grief. Man, where there's a void in your life. And he wants to bring you to the other side where there's life, eternal life. And it comes in the moment that you put on the helmet of salvation. In other words, you recognize who Jesus is. And you place your trust in him alone. If you're here this morning and you're on the side of death. But you're saying, listen, I want to come to the other side where there's life. Where, where there, there are the, abundant of, the abundance of life, where, where God has, has, has given you and I the eternal life that comes through him. Listen, we're going to pray a simple prayer. Again, it's not the prayer, but do you believe in the words that you're speaking? Do you believe in the words of, of this prayer? If you believe 
this morning and you'll confess Christ as Savior of your life and you ask him to cleanse you of your sin is the moment that Christ comes in. It's the moment of your salvation. So the prayer is going to be put on the screen. And I want you and I, I want us to keep our eyes open this morning. And I want us to pray this very simple prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I turn from my sin and I invite you to come into my heart and into my life. I want to trust and I want to follow you as Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer this morning, it's a prayer of salvation. It's a prayer of confession. You've admitted that you are a sinner. You've humbled yourself and you've given your life over. That means you've come from the side of death to the side of life. If you are a believer and you've prayed that prayer years ago, but perhaps you're still thinking like a dead man. Perhaps you're still thinking with negative thoughts. Man, you look at life and you see the glass half empty instead of half full. You're a Debbie Downer. Your thoughts are not good. Your thoughts are overwhelmed. Can I tell you this morning that you need to go back to the moment where you placed the helmet of salvation on your head? The moment that you gave your life to Christ? Because when you go back to that moment where you placed the helmet of salvation, it will cause you to focus. Not on the lies of the enemy, but it will cause you to focus on God's truth. It will cause you to realize that, that you are to be ready and that word ready just simply means this morning that this morning I am ready to declare the praises of whom, uh, of him who has set me free today. The Bible says whom the Son sets free is free. You're a free individual. His righteousness reigns within you. So this morning you have a reason to declare his praise. It also will remind you that you are on the winning team. Uh, that listen, that God has already claimed the victory over your life. And you're not only fighting, listen, for victory, but you're fighting from victory this morning. And so I want to pray for you. I want to ask God to bless those that have received Christ for the very first time. But I want to bless those this morning that need to be reminded of the moment where you put on this helmet. And it's a helmet of victory. It's a helmet that declares that Jesus is Lord of your life. So let us pray. Father God, we come to you thanking you for this, this helmet of salvation, this part of the armor that covers our mind. And Father, I pray this morning for those that have declared Jesus as Lord of their life, that have prayed a prayer of repentance, that Lord Father, that have knelt in humility, that realized that Lord Father, that they've been living on the edge of death, and now, this morning, they have walked over to life through fight faith in you alone. I pray blessings upon them. I pray encouragement as they begin a new journey. And I'm asking you to fill them with your presence by your Holy Spirit, to empower them, to strengthen them, to allow them to experience your peace and your joy today, to fill that empty void and allow them to know the fullness of God, that abundant life that comes from you. I pray for the believer today who has allowed their mind to wonder, to take for granted, Lord Father, this, the helmet of salvation, this part of the armor that covers our mind. I pray this morning for that believer today, that Lord Father, that you would cause them to focus on the truth of the word of God, that you would allow them to be ready to declare the praise of the one who has set them free and to realize, Lord Father, they're on the winning team. And that, Lord Father, you have won the battle for them. And you fight it with them, Lord Father. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. That we are an overcomer this day. And so we bless you. And we honor you. And we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Again, this morning, if you're here and you're watching and you've declared Christ and you've walked from death to life. Listen, we have a book a little book called, booklet called Now What? And this booklet will help you take the next step steps in your walk of faith. And if you will just email us 
and the email address is on the screen in front of you and you will just allow us uh, let us know that you received Christ today and you prayed that prayer we would love to send this to you free and uh, to help you grow and in, uh, in your faith we love you we're so grateful that you're with us today the Lord bless you in Jesus name we pray amen
With one touch, I am made whole. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. In the storm, you are peace. In your love, it won't let me go. You have spoken, and I know that. I've spoken and I know that it is so this morning as we end let me pray this benediction over you today it comes from Psalms 121 verse 7 and 8 the Lord will keep you from all harm he will watch over your life the Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and and forevermore. The Lord bless you. Have a great week.